Welcome to SV Seeker. We're building this mammoth 74 foot long steel research vessel in our front yard, but we need a smaller boat as a tender and a work boat, and that's the boat that this video is about. We've had it out at the lake a couple times, we've had some things that we wanted to change, and in this video we're making those modifications and taking it back to the lake. New turbo core didn't fit the old housing. The blades were 65,000 strong. So that's going to go back. Probably get a whole new turbo, but then we need to take it off the manifold, which is almost rotted out. So no manifold. So at least we're going to get a water pump and timing belt done. Oh, this is Ryan. You know, it's odd as I couldn't find the thermostat on this, and there's why it's freaking buried in the back of the pump. So we think it's got to go out that way. is uh, having a good purchase on it with the nut or the heat that goes into it but oh yeah you want to sell your Ingersoll Rand air gun? No, not yet. Oh, but there's a little boat in the carport. And then uh, yeah give me a line parallel to that across down here and make this line 14 and three quarter inch on the wide centered on that line down there and you got it. Uh, it needs to come this way, about that, about that far. Which way? Towards me. So Jay has finished up our ride pad. And this is uh, easy, Jay gave us this idea. We, we kind of thought about closing all this in, but uh, he said, hey, just put it in there and taper it down. And see the, the flow from the reverse gate goes down through here. So this is only 8 inches wide out here. It's 18 inches back in and 14 and a half, 14 and 3 quarters across the back. So that'll give us a little more surface area. And uh, I don't think it'll help plane that much more. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But it'll certainly keep the, uh, the flow of water uh, across the bottom of the boat from being disturbed by the pump. And it will keep the uh, pump from being disturbed by a large rock. So we just got four bolts up there in the front and a couple back here where the zinc anode hangs on to the bottom of the pump and uh, all good nicely done guys these are wire butt joint connectors everything is included this is jay's first time using one of these things so we're gonna see what that looks like yeah see doesn't take much does it that's great that's all there is to it stick them together apply heat done let's do this other one right underneath the solder Perfect. Yeah. Look at it start shrinking down already. You can't see the flame on this thing, but it's there. Well, it just flowed. So. There it goes. Yeah. Beautiful. That is nice. What do you think? Oh, pretty good. Thanks. You're going to use these again? Sure. Never used them before. This is a great trick. Don't have to have a roll of solder with you. It's all ready to go. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, you just got to grab these things, a pair of strippers. And just push the, it in. Your torch. Yeah, just shove it down in there somewhere. So if you like them, you can get them. You buy them through our affiliate. SV Seeker gets a little bit of the, the commission from it. So do that. The link's in the description below. Where are we getting any air through? Oh, the stopper's on. Black Beauty. I got a pair of pliers. Oh, got a piece of steel in there, it looks like. <laughs> this is pretty amazing stuff. VHC flame proof paint. Only 10 bucks at the auto parts store. Take those up to uh, 1300 to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's kind of weird. It goes 1300 to 2000. Does that mean it doesn't work at 1100? Be sure to be in a well-ventilated area, put your safety gear on, because if you're making YouTube videos, you never know when mom might be watching. 
the engine compartment was blazing hot, so I have an idea of insulating this. I have microspheres. This is stuff I use to bulk up uh, epoxy resin or uh, fiberglass resin, and uh, it's stuff you shouldn't breathe. And it says it's microspheres, but it's not hollow microspheres, but I think it'll work well anyway. Look, I'll show you what this is. I got an inexpensive gadget that everybody, every kid ought to have one of these. It's a microscope that shows the picture on the screen. Check this out. It's like 20 bucks on Amazon. And focus that. That does not, some of these look like spheres, but a lot of them just look like fragments and dust. And I think they are glass, but that is cool. I tell you what, I had a microscope when I was a kid. Probably why I'm building a sailboat to be a research vessel now. Yeah, these look like spheres. Come here, Chris, look at that. Over there, yeah. Yeah, see that? They're not like perfectly spheres, but... Maybe even hollow. I mean, that one yeah. almost looks translucent, yeah. like it has a little light in the middle of it. So anyway, we're gonna add that to our paint by just spraying it and then throwing this on what's wet. And if you like the idea of giving your kid or grandkid a microscope, I like that too. 20 bucks. I mean, come on. It's on Amazon. It's a affiliate link in the description below. You can kick a little bit of money back to us too. So they can have part of a research vessel and a microscope. Main front seal. Chris pulled off the plate right there. We got to get that out now. Look at that intake manifold. Ain't that pretty? And we made it a secondary discovery. Uh, this purple power takes off Rust Doctor really nicely. <laughs> Never would have thought that. Alcohol, no. Acetone, no. Purple power. Degrease it. Good. Probably not the best way to remove a seal. But it works. That goes in easy. Put some anti seize on there and replacing the studs we had to destroy. Get out. Geez, I want to put a little bit of never seize on these too, I suppose. And I'm just going to leave the nut welded to that one. A little bit of keepsake. I know I have a torque wrench. It's scary, right? See, that goes like that. We'll just leave it. Structural rust. Yeah, this is the cam for tightening the timing belt. And yes, that has a couple of nails in there. And I can turn that. The problem is I don't know exactly how far to turn it, but obviously it works. I think it had something to do with lining that up with that. Or maybe it was this up with that. I better look at online for that. But that definitely worked. It's snug as shit. So now the turbo is on, the oil line to it, there's the exhaust manifold. We gotta try and insulate that a little better. So I'm told this is stuff you need to get. And see everybody on YouTube is doing something like this. They're wrapping these uh, manifold pipes that come off. I didn't see anybody actually trying to do the manifold itself. And there's, I'm guessing there's a, probably a good reason for that. Reduces under hood temperature a realistic 50%. That's a, that's a much better number than an unrealistic 50%. Okay. Some of these you're supposed to get wet. This is not one of them. I think it's just wrap it on there. Ooh, very supple. Yeah, maybe this will work. And they sell this in kits too that have the uh, stainless steel zip ties, but I already have some, so I didn't get the kit. I don't think it's going to win any beauty contest, but I think it's going to work to keep the heat in. As long as we can get it down to where the water enters the exhaust, we're going to be great. Much better. Maybe even 50%. <laughs> there we are. Stainless steel. Zip tie around it and pinch the snot out of it. Oh, metal zip tie. Stainless steel locking zip tie. Yeah. I don't know, that fancy. Wow, oh, the fabric feels nice. It's soft and supple, you can make underwear out of it. That's good and snug. Okay. Come on, cut it. There we go. 
That's not going to win any prize at a car show, but it's going to keep my ass from burning up on sitting on that piece of metal that's above it. Okay. I've never seen a gasket like that. It's three layers. It's uh, all spot welded together right there, so I suppose they mean it to stay that way. Okay. Oh, this is Julian and Chris working. Chris is in for about a week. With this screw. That thing that work. Some Fisher Price grade stuff. Did he just call my tools Fisher Price grade stuff? <laughs> Don't take an engine apart and then think you're going to be able to figure out how to put it back together. You, you forget this shit. We finally that was a, that was a jigsaw puzzle there. Yeah. We figured out how this stinking mount goes back in here. That was a miracle. And somehow we lost the belt. How do you lose a freaking belt? I mean, it, it didn't walk out of the shop on its own, but that that spine belt is gone. Yep. So I guess we go buy a spare. We'll find the other one later. We want a spare. Yeah, well, know. that's my excuse anyway. I'm going to go look in the shed. People say, your shop is so organized. This is the shed. And it's got, oh, there's belts, but that doesn't look like yet. No. No. Drain the water out of the air tank while we're here. The cat always loves it when I do that. A rubber glove? They're programmers, Betsy. They need their fingers. We need our baby soft hands. Right. Yeah, well, how long are you here for, pumpkin? A week. <laughs> oh, cake up, cake. And they know when you need a band aid. <laughs> aluminum welding practice. Yeah, no, that's a good weld down there. Okay, that's the thing we made. Goes into the hose. That's gonna turn on our fan to cool the engine down. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. So we gotta find a place to mount this really circuit holder. I can just drill a hole in this thing down here. Yeah, put it there. Now we're putting our boat back together today and uh, we're going to fix the alternator problem because the alternator was back feeding current to the starter solenoid and keeping our starter on. So I got a diode that I hope will work on there. It says it's 40 amp rectifier. Rectum fryer. A rectum fryer. So we take positive from the battery, we run that to the coil on our relay, which is the small wire. This one's going to come out and it's going to go through a switch a thermally activated switch in the hose back there in the bracket that Chris made and so when it turns on the relay closes and it lets current throw, flow through these big wires and the beeping of our L meter there says that is what's happening all right that's how we can just get it wired up so that goes to the switch and that goes to the battery and the fan Dude, right on the hot side of the battery on the hot side the reason is the little switch that senses the temperature and when it closes it can't carry enough electricity or amperage to run the fan that we're going to use to cool this so the relay is just a big switch that closes big wire big amounts of electricity like four or five amps and it will turn on a blower that will cool down our engine Range. So we can put these. Oh, there's plenty of room in there. Yeah, like a steel drain. Socket. Cool. Yeah, plenty of room. Yeah. Wax helps it cut. I don't use it when I'm going to weld on it. Good fit. If you haven't gone off to uh, Amazon and bought these through our affiliate link, which we much appreciate because we get a cut from the advertising, 
These little connectors are fantastic. I just love them. They come with uh, solder in the middle and these two little uh, blue stripes which will crimp down quickly and seal around the wire. And if it doesn't have too much heat on that, an air gun's actually better. The solder will melt and that will seal up and solder those two wires together. Isn't that neat? You just cut them and stick them in. And he's even splicing three wires together here. That probably won't be a watertight, but it's still it works in this application too. So see the link in the description. Go buy them off Amazon. Thank you very much. We appreciate the cut. And while you're in there after you buy that, go buy a diving board or a swim ladder or a swimming pool. We'll get a little cut from that too. Thanks guys. It's so easy. It's so easy, so easy. But yeah, solder melted. You liked it? Yeah. yeah. Give it a good tug, make sure it's nice and yeah. You know what? I'll put a link in the description too to a hot air gun. I'm gonna buy one because it works so much better than a torch. I'm told and I agree. The torch just puts too much heat at one point. Now we're also fixing up the alternator this time through and every time I think about this alternator I feel like I have to apologize to Stephen Cox and Justin at Good of the Land and 42 Fab and probably some other people here because we kept destroying the uh, the Bendix, the little gear on the starter because it would engage, you know, that, that little has a little solenoid that throws it forward and the gear locks into the flywheel and it wouldn't come undone so we thought okay the mount's bad you know so Steven built the mount so he rebuilds the mount and the next one's bad too and then we put, finally put a whole uh, 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 what do you call it, the, the front end off of a transmission. We cut away the transmission, put the bell housing mount onto it, mounted the starter into there, ah, same problem. Turns out I was wiring it wrong and it only worked, worked wrong at the lake because I finally hooked up all the wires when we go to the lake. So we get to the lake, it doesn't work, right? So all my bad. And the problem was this, alternators need a little bit of current to to uh, cycle through their coils because they don't have permanent magnets so they turn these coils in the magnets and they start turning and they'll start generating electricity after that they run their own power through the coils so they kind of self-feed themselves but they need a little excitement and a little electricity called an exciter wire to get them started so I thought, okay, well what better when I hit the push of the button to throw the starter, there's a little current going to the starter solenoid, I'll tap into that and we'll run that over to the alternator, it'll have its juice. Yeah, except the alternator, once it's going, is feeding electricity back through that wire, so I stopped pushing the switch, but now the solenoid is getting its power from the alternator. So even though I have the switch off, that's still in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to install a diode, uh, a rectifier. That doesn't make any sense to me why they call it a rectifier, but what do you call it, a rectum fire? So here it is. It's uh, this, and I'm not sure this one's gonna work, but it, it, I'm hoping it will. It says it's good for 40 amps, okay? And what it does, it allow, it's, like a, it's like a gate valve for water. It lets water through one way, but not back the other way. So there's the wire that runs down to our starter. It's a starter solenoid down there. That's what uh, the push button does to say start the engine. And there's where I had the alternator's exciter wire tapped onto it. So we're going to cut that one away. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this wire. This is the wire that goes off to the uh, fuel shutoff on the engine. The diesel engines don't have uh, spark plugs, so when you turn them off you cut this wire and that turns off the fuel in. So we turn this wire on and then you turn the starter over the thing starts running. To turn it off you just cut power to this wire. So this is where we're going to get our exciter energy from. It's now going to come and split on down to the uh, fuel solenoid and then off as the exciter wire to the alternator. Now we're, we'll have the same problem except Chris is going to install that diode right here. It lets the electricity flow down to the alternator but not back up to the from the alternator and then into the, uh, the, the fuel solenoid. So if it did fail, what would happen is, you know, we turn the power off from this wire coming from the console and nothing happens. It means this diode has failed that he's going to put in here and it's bringing electricity back up and still down to there so the engine will not stop. Not a horrible thing because it's not really destructive. It's much better than using the, uh, the starter wire because if it fails on that, the starter stays engaged and it tears it up. We've seen that multiple times now. Now the diode has a little marking on it. See that little arrow? That is the direction the electricity will flow through this. So it'll go from this end to this end, but not the other direction. We can test that. So with our handy dandy multimeter, we're gonna put it on like uh, 
uh, 200 ohms which is, should produce some electricity through the uh, red conductor and what it does is it sees if it can uh, see it contact so if I just touch it here you can see it's, it says okay yeah I can see that these two things are connected I put it over here on this side and it says nothing they're not connected because the electricity will not flow the other direction of this arrow so now let's turn this around we'll say okay let the electricity flow that direction through there clamp that on put it over here boom electricity can flow in this direction so that is a test to show that that diode does work now it's just a matter of does it work when it's really installed you're just going to put a couple of rings on for this thing then connect one there and one there is that what you're doing yeah all right we'll, we'll prove it again here with a little light bulb so i'm just going to hold the wire against the case of the light bulb that'd be ground i'm going to put one of the prongs against the battery there touch the other side boom i get a light okay now hand me your diode where'd that go so it's flowing from positive to negative so we're going to turn it around so that the arrow points downward there i touch the wire to this end touch the light bulb over here and we get a light now i turn this around same thing hold that to there touch this to here touch this to there no light nothing that's cool let's just try it in a direct short look at that doesn't Not even high. short yeah so good that's a good test i think so maybe a little smaller one than this yeah you maybe bring like, a little bolt for the other side uh yeah okay I'll that'd be it. great it smells looking good while we're on the topic of electronics betsy has wired up a cyber cube cyber cube cloud this is a little piece of electronics that Betsy has wired up. It tells us that our cook stove is at 276 degrees. So it's got a thermometer in there, one of those uh, dual metal parameters actually, to get the temperature inside of our Commando Joe. And look, it controls a little fan down here on the air intake so it can decide how much air should be flowing into the thing. Isn't that cool? Got a little bit of the vent open there on it. So if you want to control your barbecue pit from your phone, you can do that. Ask Betsy how, and I bet there'll be a link in our affiliate store, won't there, for the CyberQ? Yes, and in fact, I have made it public that for you can personal Facebook friends of can mine, see your stove they working. Can watch me cook. Oh, that's just a fact. Here it is. <laughs> 276 degrees. Is that a picture? Oh, that you cooking. Yes. Oh, that is so fancy. When I just, it's such a recent picture. <laughs> it holds it at 275 because the fan wasn't running. Right. So if it drops, it turns the fan on and heats right. it back so up. So now again. I can go run errands and it should be okay. Check the. And in two hours. Ribs go on. Oh, well, they're on. Oh, they're on now? Oh, I'll show a picture of them. I won't. I won't open it long. Oh yeah, dinner tonight. See, there's the little probe there. And you can put another probe in the meat and it'll actually do it there too. So yes, the Commando Joe is going on the boat with us, kind of in the back corner from the kitchen so we don't have to feel the heat, unless we want to feel the heat. That'd be feeling nice, it's off Greenland. Please, oh please fit. Oh, oh yeah. Barely. Yeah, but it fits. Close. It fits. It fits. Oh, that's the blade turning there. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have a flame, does it? Oh, it's touching the uh, that mount down there. These need to be rotated. So, ouch. Damn it, that thing's sharp. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. That's a lot of air. It's a lot of air. Is it? Could be. You think that's gonna get warm? Maybe. Yeah, let's uh let's move this up to a number ten. Yep. Number ten and side of the connector so they yeah. keep pull off. Exactly. Alright. Good idea. Well after an hour of rerouting a wire from the starter switch, you know I wanna buy better wire from now on because brand new wire shouldn't just go bad, but it did. So we got it where we'll turn the starter over again. Good. 
I think we had a blown fuse because we should see the volts come up. So we'll replace the fuse and see you see the gauges activate. Means you got something there. So now we give it a start. It's time to head to the lake again. There is Keystone Lake. This is the Arkansas River, the beginning of the Incarns. It's about 40 miles from here. Incarns. McKellen Kerr, Arkansas River Navigational System. Our route to the ocean. what it is. I can actually put my hand on it. Last time I couldn't even do that. That turbo was so stinking hot. So success there. We got the tippiness taken care of. Walking around in here doesn't make it move any. Oh, look at the water line. That may be under pressure. You're right above it. I wouldn't do that. Let me do it. Hey. Yeah. You back off to the side. Yeah, that's going to have some pressure on it. See, that's why you didn't want to be sitting where you were. Thank you for the money. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> but it had water up to it, so really we were full enough that we know we don't got to fill it twice now. On. Oh, look at that. The fan even shut down on its own. Nice. Nice. That is a, it's all working. It's so far. Yeah. Something. There's no resistance. Yeah, I broke. Oh hell, we broke our reverse gate. Ah, no biggie. A nut fell off down in there. It's the arm. Yeah, okay, that's easy to solve. We 1100 RPM at idle and 2750 at full throttle. It looks pretty good even with the air closed off. Yeah, maybe it's getting in another way. I don't see how. It's just got to be sucking around the edges. Alright, that's not expected. It'll keep raining and waves out, but it's not going to kill the engine. So the way this is built, when we turn it like that, it shuts off the air, but the engine just doesn't seem to care. And when you have it open, you can definitely feel it drawing air. But shut it off, it's getting air from someplace else. At full RPM, it would have an impact. But it's really to keep wind and rain out, so when you store the boat, just close it over and keeps uh, rain going through our snorkel pipe.
One last test. I want to see how she is to get in without a swim ladder. Sorry for the wind and all the chop, but there is our tender. We're gonna love her the way she is. Now she's not a speedboat, she's not gonna ski behind her, but she's got a lot of hours in her. We love that. We are gonna put some uh, sound dampening in the uh, engine compartment to get a little quieter, but other than that, that is the boat we go with. And a new nut on the uh, reverse gate. Nylock, probably ought to put one on the steering while we're at it. We got a hole. Now there's a well that wasn't completed. Good, that one's gonna need some work. That one over there too? Yeah. Yeah, same place, other side. I'll grab a marker. Oh, I don't need a marker. I can see where it is. It's a, it's a feature. You get a foot bath. And yeah, that's a lot of water in there. Yeah, well, yeah you'd have to have a, a chicken fried steak. Or else we're not going. Yeah. You up for a chicken fried steak? Yep. Okay. Crescent Cafe. Okay. Yeah. Man, it's just ripping. <laughs> it looks like I'm doing work. Take her. There we go. Has this been in the uh, projects photos? Yeah. Yeah? This is back, uh, back in like April, May. Yeah. And this dude, this is Chris Martin's travel home. Chris has been with us this week, helping out, and pulling out today, but not before taking his Harbor Freight fold-up trailer and welding it so it's not going to be folded up anymore. I folded trailers before and they weren't meant to fold. <laughs> so you got your own solar system? Yeah. Oh, there's a solar panel up on top. 100 watts on the roof. Uh, battery, inverter. Yeah. What's that weird little box in the middle there? That's a fuse block. Oh, a fuse block. Oh, who needs fuses? Jeez. Poor man's breaker panel. Yeah. Yeah, a little fan up there in the ceiling. Sweet. Yep, dome lights. It's one of those flexible solar panels, isn't it? Yep, it only weighs four pounds and it's held in place with uh, double stick tape and caulk. Yeah, that's going to be a thing for our solar panels. They weigh like uh, 60 pounds 60. and they're going yeah. way up high. They're probably the glass, the rigid frame. They are. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate it. And all the support too, guys. We couldn't be doing this without you. And don't forget to send us your project photos. What did you make today?